नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल सो टुडे आवर पॉइंट ऑफ डिस्कशन वुड बी वन वायर वेस्ट टेम्परेचर सेंसर एंड विल बी इंटीग्रेटिंग दैट विद आर एस पी थर्टी टू यूजिंग आर एस पी आई डी एफ प्लेटफॉर्म सो लेट्स बिगिन सो वन वायर इज अ वेरी सिंपल प्रोटोकॉल विच वॉज अर्लियर डेवलप बाई डेलस सेमी कंडक्टर एंड इट द नेम स्पेसिफाइज इट सेल्फ इट यूज इज वन वायर फॉर डेटा एंड इट्स बेसिकली बाई डायरेक्शनल प्रोटोकॉल बट half duplex that mean at a time only one either master or slave can communicate you can read about it more online at any available website so one wire was basically first developed by dallas semiconductor it was later acquired by maxim integrated and ultimately maxim was acquired by analog devices let's have a visual look at how it actually happened All right. Hope you like that visual representation. <laughs> Moving on, you can have a look at the various one-wire wish devices, ranging from simple battery gauge to temperature sensor, and plenty other. We'll be using DS one eight B two zero as our one-wire wish digital thermometer. Uh, it can measure temperature ranging from minus fifty five degrees to one twenty five degrees Celsius, and it can also operate on a parasite power supply but we won't be uh, you giving that parasite power mode we'll be giving it a dedicated power supply on vdd pin so we'll be using three pins vdd dq and ground next you can have a look at the supply voltage 3 to 5.5 we'll be giving it a 5 volt and the sink current input logic low logic high all this is electrical table representations next you can have a look at all the timing for low and high respectively so this chip has a unique 64 bit serial code and hence multiple devices of the same manufacturer can be connected on this one wire bus but we'll be using only one sensor right now so we won't be worrying about multiple sensors and these are all the timing diagrams right zero right one reset time high reset time low presence detect high presence detect low all of this timing diagram is available in the data sheet you can have a look at it later next comes up the more specification detail about the ds18 b20 and you can have a read at it the most important one is that it is um, an open drain based circuit inside the chip and the bo- block diagram is easily available wherein you can see the scratch pad you can see 64 bit rom memory available the dq pin which is pulled up because if it's an open drain inside you need a pull up register to define the state and then we have power supply and ground pins also a double prom is available inside which can copy the scratch pad re- data to the double prom next up you can have a look at the temperature register how the temperature is actually coded so this you can have a look how 9 10 11 and 12 bit resolutions are possible and all that stuff then you have like the commands available two types of command are there first is rom command and second is a function command you can have a look at how you can power the chip but i would suggest that you give it a dedicated power supply because it's better as compared to parasitic power supply all right so how the 64 bit is eventually break it, broke down that's also explained so it's an 8 bit crc 48 bit serial number 8 bit family code whatever and double prom ultimately stores only three registers that is high and low trigger alarms registers and configuration register we won't be bothering with all this stuff we will just straight up use the default value for resolution that is 12 bit right now and we'll just be reading this scratch pad 9 byte memory so the crc and you can have a look at it and here we have the configuration register r0 and r1 bit you can change it up to change the resolution in the crc we have a 8 bit polynomial crc and next up 
you can have a look at the conversion time that is required for that particular bit resolution for 12 bit we'll be using 750 milliseconds the data sheet also mentions the transaction sequence that needs to be followed first initialization then roam command then function command so in the roam command you have a search roam command then you have a read roam command for a single slave device you can read the roam address you have a match roam command if you know which roam com roam sorry which address you need to match it with so we'll be using skip roam command we won't be bothering with whatever device addresses for that particular device and next you have function commands so function commands are as following you have a convert t command wherein you just order it to start with the temperature conversion process then you have a write scratch pad wherein you write the alarm triggers and configuration register next you have a read scratch pad wherein you read all the data and then evaluate it we'll be using ma convert t and read scratch pad the two function commands nothing else right now we won't be bothering anything else then you have a copy scratch pad command in which you can copy the scratch pad configuration and trigger values directly to wprom value okay so we also have a flow chart available in the data sheet you can have a look at it you will just have to send the initialization sequence wherein you set, transmit a reset pulse read a presence pulse then you transmit a roam command you won't be going with any of the other commands so no 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 and directly to skip rope command then yes and then we'll be following it to transmitting a function command in the function command our command is the first one that is convert temperature yes we won't be using parasite power so no then eventually gradually you will be reaching to you'll be reading if temperature conversion is taking place or not and if it's if you read one then it means that the conversion pr process has taken place if you read zero it's still going on and then ultimately you will exit and again the initialization sequence will take place so again reset presence skip roam command and then we'll be moving on to read scratch pad function command so read scratch pad then we'll be reading all the 8 bytes and eventually the crc byte then we'll again escape you can also have a look at the example available in the bottom side of the data sheet somewhat similar to what we'll be trying to do next up let's have a look at the timing diagram for writing reading and reset it's pretty simple not much difficult to understand you have uh, a b c d e f i up to j simple delays that need to be followed for a proper one zero writing reading or reset and presence so it's self-explainable now no need to explain much for one you need to pull the dq pin low for a time pull it high back for b time and we'll be following standard speeds so that would be in microsecond whatever is recommended so one thing is that even though the j timing for that j alphabet is 410 microsecond I had increased it slightly by 10 microsecond to 420 microsecond for this application. As when I was using 410, the CRC that I was receiving was sometimes correct, sometimes it was incorrect. So I just increased it 10 microsecond. All right, so next up, we'll just see how simple the connection is. We have ESP32, DS1218B20. We will be connecting the DQ pin to GPIO 4 of our ESP32. Next, uh, the VDD would be connected to 5 volt ground to ground. Our DQ pin will be pulled up by 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Since I didn't have that exact resistance value, I tried to connect plenty of resistors in series to achieve that. Also, since my temperature sensor was 1 meter wired one, so I connected a 10 microfarad capacitor. 
all right sorry i have drawn it on dq but it, the capacitor is connected to vdd and ground sorry for the mistake let's move on so i've actually connected all the device according to what we have discussed next up let's see how in the code what we are receiving the temperature so after connecting and powering up the device and monitoring the com port what we can see is the current temperature is close to 30 degrees celsius and the crc is also correct for now next up what we'll be doing is we'll be taking a bowl full of ice thanda thanda cool cool and let's see what the temperature reaches all right so i've dipped the sensor deep down in the ice and we can observe that the temperature is dropping of course i have fast forwarded this video and it eventually reaches to roughly about 3 degrees celsius next when i remove this sensor back from the ice tub the temperature will gradually rise and this time also i have fast forwarded the video and it eventually settles back to 28 29 degrees roughly next up if i'll show you if i remove this capacitor the temperature value is still correct but the crc we are receiving is incorrect so that's why i connected a capacitor so this is the basic code and here we have all the timing from a to j i have some pretty basic functions that is read bit write bit read byte write byte computation of crc and a basic get data sequence so this is a very simple example using the concepts of one wire basic one wire it's not that complicated to understand that's why i have kept it pretty simple just the bare minimum all right a crc computation can be done in two ways first is the direct one and the second one is this lookup table one so this is one is pretty much faster compared to the earlier one in the get data we have a simple sequence that we have already discussed reset presents then skip rom then convert temperature and we'll wait till it is converted then again reset presents skip rom and read the memory so this is it i'll take a leave for now and we'll be in touch so that would be it for now do not forget to like and share this video subscribe the channel to see such kind of videos in the future thank you